<laughs> okay. So, let me, I'll paint for a little bit. I'll paint for a little bit, uh, zoomed out, and then I got this camera that can really zoom in now. And so let's go like this. Let's put some distant trees in here. And the way I do distant greens in a painting, you can real quickly go too green with those distant colors. And so the way that I, sorry, I'm trying to, uh, hang on a second. I want to go over to that live chat while I'm chit-chatting. The way you create distant greens is by making sure to add enough gray because they just get really desaturated, you know, really desaturated with distance. So when you mix blue and green paint, you get this real beautiful turquoise color. But when you mix blue and green light, it, that is not the case. It, uh, it actually becomes a, a lot more gray when you mix those two colors together. And so to create like a dark green forest in the far distance. I want green, so here, let's add a tiny bit of this, of this thalo green. And just use a ton of gray along with it. And let's see where that gets us. It might be better just to go blue too, because, you know, it depends how close I want it. So the closer ones, I'll use maybe a little more green, but real distant stuff real distance stuff, maybe I'll just use blue because that's that's closer to my atmosphere color. Actually, let's do that. Let's put blue in here and then I'll add black and white. There's white, here's black. And this is how I'm gonna get my super distant color. This is my very, very distant greens. And then I'll, I'll really bring these trees up high so that we have some some changing perspective here. Let's go like this. Put some little, I'm thinking deciduous trees. I was, I was like, which camera am I? <laughs> I got two of them going. Oh man. Hmm. Okay, here's my most distant. And so you can see that that's a, that's a bluer color. And then if I want to get a little bit closer, then maybe I just do the same thing since, since a phthalo green is already a real, a real green, a real, a real blue green. It's a very bluish green. Then I can use it by just adding gray to get a lot of atmosphere in my, in my uh, colors. So here I'll just add a little more of that phthalo green for a closer layer and black they look green and black so that it's still got a good amount of that gray in it and we're just building out the layers of closer and closer trees so let's make these higher it'll be higher and closer and I think we need a better sky too actually so after we go higher and closer on this I think we're gonna want to get a different brush And let's brighten up the sky. Let's just do white and blue. Let's go like this. Maybe make a little bit of a gradient. So I just slammed this with, with blue and white. Same thing that was on there, but this is just gonna be more pure more pure color and so that I can I can uh, get better contrast as light as I can go on this sky is gonna allow me to get nice contrast give me room to to put more difference between light and shadow in the foreground so let's go up here get this nice and bright We should throw a few clouds in here too. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? We'll do the quick clouds. We'll do the super quick version of clouds. I'm putting pure white down here. I'm just gonna bring this right down over the trees. I always talk about painting 
you know, painting negative space, positive space. So, you know, it's just the space in between things. If, if I say negative space, I just mean the space in between. So if I put little dots of this atmosphere color down here, it might separate a few trees, give me some fun, fun little details. We won't get too tiny with the details yet. We're just gonna throw together this scene real quick. I'll put more white in here. The trick to this is lots of paint. Give yourself room to mess around. You know, if you wanna do this, Okay, there we go. Now we got some good colors on there. Now when I put the, now when I put the tree line in there, it's gonna, it's gonna be nice and bright. So next, let's put, let's put some clouds in here. And so if I go pure white and red, the red is going to give me a cloud color. So watch this. Here, let's zoom in real quick with, with this guy just a little bit. Let's go up here. And actually, while I'm up here on this camera, let's see if there's a let's see if there's a way to get a little bit more light on here. I'm having a little bit of trouble with the exposure. Mm. Nope, I don't know how to do it. Never mind. We'll figure it out later. But right now we can zoom in. So let's zoom in a little bit up here. Go this way. And we'll come up in here and make a cloud right here. Oh, the whole thing's on auto. That's why. I've got to learn the camera. Okay, so right in here. Right in here, we're gonna put a cloud. So let's put pure white in there. Just get the edge of a cloud. So the way I get that nice bright color, and, and I really appreciate that question about the yellow. You know, working with yellow is hard. Well, working with white is hard too, uh, for the same reason. And so uh, my brush technique of just laying it on, just it's, it's right on top, but the more I mess with it, the darker it's gonna get. So I'll just have a real gentle contact with my handle down like this in order to get this white to stay bright right there and then I'll just I'll just barely barely touch it at this at this angle in order to get that blue to to start to mix in with it a little bit and get some cloud texture in there so I've got a cloud rising up above the trees in here and if I add a little bit of red it's going to give me a shadow so watch this red right in here Let's mix it with the blue. Just let that mix, and then we go over here. Okay, here we go, here we go. Okay. So I just mixed that until it became a shadow color and just got that subtle, subtle effect of a cloud shadow and it just killed that blue just enough, you know. So here, let's put a little bright edge over here. Let's bump that up right there. So you can use red and blue. I feel like there was never a sky that couldn't be painted with red, yellow, and blue. The red and the blue make a great shadow. The red and yellow you know, they're the primary colors. You can paint a whole landscape with red, yellow, and blue. But but uh, because of the, you know, because of the usually not not primary colors of, of a sky, it's real easy to just use those, use those three colors and mix them together as needed for shadow or highlight or orange sun rays coming through. So here I just have this real muted, real muted kind of purple touch to that, to that shadow. And that's all I need for just a simple cloud. That's all I need. I'm not trying to do anything fancy, but sometimes for a picture, simple is better. 
Let's put a few more in here. Let's put a cloud maybe coming across here now. Put some bright white. And then I just blend it down into that blue. Look, that's all I got to do. I don't need to do anything else because my, my sky is still wet because I put so much paint on it. All right, now I'm going to go over here and do it again. We'll go right here. Maybe like right in here. Let's put one kind of rising up. And look, my brush has these darker grayer colors in it now, the reds from over here. It's the big brush, you know. Fun thing about using a big brush is, uh, you know, there's some things that happen that, that don't happen with a tiny brush. So all I do is just barely touch this. It fades down into that shadow, disappears. Quickest clouds ever, huh? All right, let's do some over here. I better watch out that I don't do like the, do like the twin, twin clouds in the picture. We don't want that. We'll just put these little little guys coming across here like that. Then if we mix a little red and blue, this is fun. I always like to throw a couple of these in here. So let's just take some, take some blue and a little bit of red and go like that. Purple. But it's a real gray purple. It's a real grayish purple. And I just take this brush, do these short strokes going up and down like this. Starting, starting at, the, I guess I'm, you know, doing all down strokes like this, just with the broad side of the brush. You know, I've got it turned this way. And I just let that mix with the lighter color. I want to make sure there's some, there's some white in there. And this is like, you know, maybe in a shadow in the, in a three-dimensional sky. We've got sh shadows being cast by all kinds of different clouds. Who knows if it's overhead or somewhere else? It doesn't matter. All I know is that I end up with dark clouds in front of light clouds in front of dark clouds, and it goes back and forth like that. So if I just make some, some darker clouds in front of this light cloud, it's this real, real signature effect that, that we're used to seeing, you know, and it's just fun to I just really love the contrast of the overlap. So I'll make them smaller and smaller as they go down here, like this. Go here. No, I think that's good. We'll stop right there. And so now I'm gonna go down here and continue my landscape. Now I've got a sky. And so what should we do next? What should we do? We've got, we've got rocks to do, we've got trees, and I wanna give myself something to reflect on the water. So I'm gonna do some closer trees and maybe an embankment. I forgot, you know what, in the last video someone mentioned, how do you paint Chinese rocks? And that was a funny question to me. I forgot to look it up, but I really wanted to do that because then the then you, you, whoever left that comment, you described taller rocks, more up and down vertical rocks with cracks. So maybe something signature to that area. And so I, I forgot to do that. I wanted to take a look and do some more up and down rocks. But I think it's a cool idea. I actually got to go to the Boundary Waters a couple years back. And I loved the way there were big boulders and tall rocks towering out of the water there. And so I like the idea of doing some big different kinds of rocks, although probably not going to be that signature look of what you described as Chinese rocks. I think it'd be cool to put big rocks in here as well. So that's the way I'm going with my imagination here. I'm developing the picture. And so let's paint some closer trees again. So here, now I can actually overlap. I can overlap my, my colors here. Let's go like this. Get you in a little bit closer. And let's make sure that we're focused on there. You can see what I'm doing. Right here, black, white, and phthalo green. Just a little bit of that green, I think, is real powerful. You know, I just barely dipped the brush in that phthalo green right there. And then I've got the brush 
I've got the brush this way, you know, I've got that longest point facing toward the canvas and I kind of smash it against the canvas. So when I do this real quick, I'm smashing that against it to get a round shape at the top and then a downstroke to cover. So I just do that to make my edge go up here and like this. And lighter touches with more paint will give me more control, you know. So if, I, if I'm wanting to make some smaller shapes, wanting to get more detailed, then lighter touches with more paint is the way I would do that. Okay, let's make an even closer layer. Let's go like this and put some more black and some more white and some green. Let's put the black in there. Okay, there we go. Let's make some closer trees out of this. See, we needed those colors anyway. <laughs> I needed them for my closer trees, so it's not all wasted. I realized, hey, I better start bringing my closer trees in here on these edges. So we'll take the lighter color. We'll take the lighter color and scoot it over. So let's take this one, add some white and black to it. This was my lighter color here. So it's real, real quick to switch back and forth. You know, you can, you don't have to, you don't have to commit to doing, I'm going to do my distant trees here and my close trees here. You know, you can, you can just go back and forth and, and feel it out as you go, because all you're doing is, is going back and forth with green, black, and white in order to get this, this color. Yeah, there we go. I like that. So now we've got closer trees in here black green and then i can start adding some little details in there as well as it gets closer if i really want to see really want to see some foliage so let's let's start sharpening up the edges by going a little slower lighter touch more paint i'm going to give a little dip in my water bucket i've got water on the brush i just kind of stirred it in there and you know just a lighter touch with more paint i get sharper little edges so that i don't have the big fat brush strokes that look more impressionistic and I can start creating smaller shapes that we might expect to see on closer trees. So once you set up the shadow with this with this grayer greener color then <laughs> I looked over at the computer and <laughs> I see, uh, no, I get very impatient with myself while painting. <laughs> I know that feeling. Okay. I set myself up for some nice bright highlights. Let's put yellow and white and green. I just want to get a brighter green. So all I, all I did was do less black, more yellow. That's what I did in order to get a brighter, brighter highlight color. Less black, more yellow, and then I'm gonna go in here and start doing little touches. And I think I wanna go real easy, real easy on that green. It's gonna start looking unnaturally bright green real fast. So let's just put a few little, little dabs in the distance here. These still are not my real close trees, so all I'm gonna do is make a few little little splotches that kind of get darker as they go down, just like with the cloud, you know. Brighter, greener colors. And I'm just going to make them a little more white and yellow there. Put a few spots there, there, somewhere up in here in the top. Just a couple little highlights. And then I'm just going to blend the, the lower edges of these so that they go down and disappear into the shadows, you know, just... Just touch the bottom edge a few times to blend it. And then we've got a little bit of little bit of three-dimensional form to the trees now. Let's put a couple in there. Maybe this is like a big tree going across here. Let's bring it down and over. So the trick to this fine texture is the stipple of the brush. I just have the 
I just have the stipple of the brush pulling off of all that wet, wet paint in order to get some, some texture in there. Now each layer actually needs to come down lower and lower. So do you see this, this line? I don't really want that. You know, I want my, I want my horizon to get higher and higher as it gets further away. So I better think about that and put this coming closer. So let's go like this and, and put more of our original black, green, white mix in here and just bring it down a little bit lower in order to create the perspective on the ground. And this is a good opportunity for me to throw some darker shadows in the lower part of these now, like that. And let's put, just because shadows are more affected by atmosphere than light, I'm gonna put blue in this shadow. So let's just throw some blue in there get a deeper, deeper, darker shadow under these trees. But I, I want it to just be a subtle effect. I don't want anything super extreme. I just thought it'd be fun to throw that in. We'll put some in here too. We need this to get a little bit higher as it goes back. Like this, this needs a little bit more black and white now. Let's add black because it's getting too vivid on the color. I wanna keep this a lot more gray in the distance. So I'm just adding white to get that to be more gray. And we bring these, these down there. Now this one's higher, this one's lower. I want this one to be, to be the lowest. So let's grab that color again. You can also put little shadows in, in your trees. The same way you put the highlight in, you can just put little shadows. And if you blend highlights, if highlights get blended down, then shadows get blended up. So. What we do is we, we dab the top side of a little shadow. So watch this. I'll put lots of black right here because I want to show you how this works. Black in here, we've got a dark shadow coming down here, getting closer and closer to us. What I'm going to do with that shadow is let's find a good spot. I'm going to put it right between these trees right here. So let's grab that dark color and go like that. Here, let's get a little bit more. Let's just go right there and maybe there's another shadow right there and so to turn that into a three-dimensional shadow just like I took the highlights and I blended those down like this I'm just gonna blend this shadow up like that top edge just obscure that top edge and then it's a shadow that goes down in between trees and then I can Take away a little of the intensity. It's a little bit on the pure black side. So I'll dab it a couple times. You know, uh, one thing I've really worked on over time with this technique of just going straight to canvas, wet on wet, is, is mixing enough and stopping before it takes away my shapes. Because in the process of mixing, I get texture that I like and I just stop. I just stop in time to leave it there. Okay, so now we need a little bit of an embankment. So if you have a color like this maroon, then we have this. How long has he been painting? I just saw that pop up. <laughs> Two episodes now, this is the second. Okay, so now, uh, if you have a color like this, I'm just going to hold it up so, so I don't have to do a, a clever camera switch or anything. You know, if I just aim this toward the, toward the light a little bit, you can see this is a, the color of rust. And so it's a very uh, deep kind of dark red orange color. I can't mix it this dark with red, yellow, and black. That's how I would mix this red, yellow, black. But if I use those colors, it will be a little more grayish. So this is a primary because I can't mix it. And if you have a color like that, then uh, you can go like this. Otherwise, you might just try using red. But watch what happens when I take that and go right across the base of the trees right there. And then I'm gonna go, and you can see my unfinished edge there. I'm gonna go like this and blend this up into the green. And then once I blend that up into there, it's time to put white 
on my most colorful area. So let's put white right here, like that. And let's put a little more white. I've got room to do that. It's a nice, nice colorful color. And then I'm going to blend up like this. I'm going to go up into the shadows. And the green mixes with the orange, making it not so unnatural looking. The white brightens it. And then we've got some ground going up into our little, little forest there. And the colors kind of kill each other. And that's an effect of using opposite colors against each other to create the shadow between two, two lights. And so then I can just put a little bit more white on there if I want to highlight it like this. Let's get that to show up a little bit like an embankment coming out over this, over this water. And just to mix the white mix the white in there enough that it's no longer white but kind of takes on those those colors there now we've got this embankment in here and I feel like it'd be fun to have some darker trees way way up here kind of cutting off this edge so right there I'll put some I'll put some, uh, here, let's go the other way. Here, hold on, hold on, not that black yet. I wanna show you this, this will be fun. Okay, so I'm gonna go up here and do my biggest, darkest tree. So let's go here. And I wanna show you how. I wanna show you how I can go the other way around. I can do highlights first. So let's go yellow. Yellow and black make a pretty good green. Let's see if it's bright enough. Let's go like this. And let's put lots of yellow in there because the yellow, just like, just like you said earlier, the yellow very quickly loses its yellowness, loses its brightness, just barely touches. So we gotta use real clean brushes. We gotta use lots of paint. We gotta, you know, we gotta really try hard to keep the vividness of a yellow. Is that a word? Vividness? Is vividness a word? I actually don't know. Anyway, it gets the point across. Now I'm adding a little green. I don't want to add a ton because I feel like it's going to kind of look unnatural. I've uh, many times used green for foliage in, in landscapes and then I'm like, man, why does the whole thing kind of look artificial? It's, it's because it's because that that saturation of green is out of balance with the rest of the painting. You know, it's, yeah, you can saturate a whole painting and really amplify the greens and it can be beautiful. But but a lot of the time I, I go to a green and put it on a painting that is otherwise not a very saturated painting. And then the greens are like, they explode it and, and it looks like somebody, it, it looks like painted trees, not, not like trees that are set in that environment. So... I want to just be careful with the greens that I use. So highlights first. We've got we've got our green in there, and this is what I want. I want to see those highlights. Look at the brightness of them compared to this. I want them to be equal in brightness, but greener. You know, I want to see more color because it's closer. I want to see more color than these highlights back here. And equal brightness. I don't want them to be brighter than that. As that goes back into the atmosphere, it doesn't need to get it doesn't need to get darker, you know. So I'm just looking for a balance right now as I add my as I add my colors. So I can put some white in here and get a little bit brighter. So that looks like a good balance to me. I don't want that color on that on that background. I don't want that. Let's pull it off with my finger. <laughs> Let's go like this. Put some bright colors. Okay, so now I can create the shadows in this big bright tree with, uh, with this. Watch, let's go like this. Let's go blue and black. The reason I'm adding blue to the black is because then that blue will mix with what's here. Give me a little more color in these shadows. I try not to lose color as I go into shadows. It's inevitable, but you know... As much as I'm able, I try to keep color in the shadows. We're used to interpreting 
you know, I feel like when we're outside looking at stuff, the way we know what a shadow is, what it means, you know, in order to know, understand what we're looking at, I feel like the way we put that information together is by the color of the shadow. You know, and there are these real subtle differences in, in the little, the shades of gray that can be in a shadow. Okay, so now I've got blobs of black. Doesn't look too much like a tree, right? Let's put some more black. Let's get pure black and just go. Put that in there. And maybe we've got room since this is losing so much color. Maybe we've got room for green. I'm just ultra careful about getting too much green. I don't want an overly green tree. I'm putting shadow spots all over this tree and everywhere I don't put this is a highlight. Now here's how I make it look like not just a bunch of blobs of black on my canvas. Here, let's put them in here. Let's make some perspective. Before I do the next step, let's make them closer together and smaller as they go along the side. So we're going to add a little bit of three-dimensional uh, perspective to this tree by putting these shadows more scrunched together, just like a cloud. You know, this is the way I paint clouds too. And we're going to put them closer and closer together as they go to the edge. As they go to the edge of this tree. Okay, done. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not done. Okay. So now we go like this, blend everything, every edge of all these black spots. I'm not going to think about a tree. I'm not going to think about the foliage. You know, this is just technique in order to free up, free up my brain space for other creativity. You know, I get tired if I have to think through manually making everything I want to see. So what I'm going to do is just like I did here, I'm going to blend the upper left edge of every one of these little black shadows in order to create the effect of the light merging into the shadow, right? And then leave a sharper edge on the opposite lower right side of every little spot to create the overlap of those highlights so that I've got the edges rolling around the tree. And I've got plenty of time to sit here and jibber jabber about it because I put tons of paint on the canvas and I'm not worried about I'm not worried about that giving me bad results because I've done it enough times. I have confidence. So uh, just, just to try to encourage you that the repetition of trying these kinds of techniques really is very, very helpful uh, for, for your painting and building up confidence and technique that can free up imagination space, you know, keep you from feeling overwhelmed at the uh, creative process. Okay, so now I've got black in here and see how I blended it on that upper left edge. I left this edge sharp. I'm going to do it again right here. And look how it's not so black anymore. This is why I was really globbing it on because that black is going to mix with the green that's on there and not be so black anymore. So we blend every edge that is on the upper, upper left right there. Here, I'm going to zoom in a little more so you can really see this. Since I've got this nice camera, might as well use it. Let's go like this. Whoop, wrong way, wrong way. I'm looking at an opposite image here. There we go. There, now you can see. Now you can see this technique a little bit better. Let's make sure that it's focused. Okay, we've got it. Now let's go like this. And we're going to just dab this upper left edge of each one of these guys. Okay, I'm going to go through real quickly now. And just very systematically. I'm not trying to make a tree. I don't care if this looks like a tree or not. You know, it's kind of like when... It's kind of like when the homeowner asks an employee you know, or when a customer asks an employee, why, why doesn't this store have what I want? Or why are you painting that ugly thing on my house? I don't know. I just work here. Th this is what this does. It's like, hey, man, I don't know if I'm making a tree. I, I just do this technique and a tree comes out. That's what it does for your mind. 
I'm just here to do this technique. I'm not here to make the tree. That's the paint's job. You need to go talk to the paint. Uh, if you're not liking it, that's my best advice. Talk to the creator of the technique. Okay, let's go like this. And you can see that starting to become a more three-dimensional object as I just gradually dab all of those edges. Then we're just going to... I really got, got to just be on the hunt, you know. Just use all of your... Use all of your energy to just look for those edges. And then once I feel like I've got, got all of them, or most of them, I think most is good, then I can try to obscure it where I want to. So, you know, maybe then I go in and just dab around a few spots to make it a little more randomized. You know, we've got a little bit of green over black, black over green. We're gonna just obscure the pattern a little bit. There we go. And that black is going to find its way up into this green. Darken it a little bit. The green finds its way into the black, lightens it a little bit. And that gives me room to do additional light and shadow and have a big, thick, full looking tree. So here I can put more black in there. Let's put like a big divide in the tree, right? Right there. This will be fun. Let's go like that. And then let's just dab both sides of the shadow where I want that green to be coming out of it. There it is, emerging out of the shadow on that side. Let's put it kind of emerging out of the shadow on this side too. It's like just a, just a divide in the tree where it kind of gets deep. And let's put plenty of plenty of green in here. So let's pick a big dark shadow with black and green right there. Just dab that in there. Okay, let's do dark colors like that. There, now we've got kind of a, a deeper shadow, more of a, you know, I feel like it's a little more of an organic shape to the tree, not just big and perfect and round. And I feel like if I make shadows that extend, you know, see these skinny lines of shadows? I always like to see those, those little crevices between shapes coming out. So it gives me kind of longer fingering shapes coming out off of the tree if I put those little shadows in there. And so then maybe we can just put a few bright highlights in it and finish it off that way. So in here, let's see, what are we going to do down in here? Let's change that to a brown and then paint the negative space in there. So let's go down here real quick. Okay, so down here I want to have, I want to have my tree trunk. So let's back out just a little bit and we're going to put the we're going to put the tree trunk on this guy. So down here we might want to see some brown and what I'm going to do is start by painting the space in between and so all I got to do is is change that to a brown by putting this color right here and so this is just going to become some branches and sticks and twigs here let's put a branch let's put a piece of trunk that goes right through there right through there maybe a little branch right here wherever my black spots are is a good place to put those here let's put a little bit of white there a little bit of highlight for trunk color like right in here put a little bit of light hitting that trunk right in there, maybe here, here, wherever I've got black spots, just a little splash of a brownish color can quickly create the impression of some, some branches going here and there. And then I'm going to go in here and put some, some negative space in behind these. So just to develop my shapes, I'm going to put my grayish bluer color. So I just so happen to need it over here. So we'll leave that be. We'll just let that, we'll put that on simmer. Well, we come over here 
and get into some gray or blue or colors, which are what I need for, for the uh, background on the other side. So in here, I'm gonna just go like this. And here, let's do a quick rinse on the brush. There, I just put it in the water bucket, switch it around a little bit, get it, get it, uh, you know, cleanish. It's not perfectly clean, but it's enough. It's not, it's not going to make these like overly red now. So over here, I also want some, I also want some gray atmosphere color. So let's put some gray in here like this and let's put some, Put some white on there, and how about some green? I, I'm thinking like this, that that uh, distance right there. So I used green in that mix. Green, black, and white. I guess this one's gonna be a little bit closer than that one, because it's a little bit darker and greener, but it's still pretty gray. Let's go up like this. Let's bump those trees up this way, like this. You know, if you can learn one thing in painting landscapes, I would say learn how to create depth with atmosphere. That is the one very powerful uh, effect in a landscape because if you can do that, you just make a bunch of silhouettes with colors and you've got depth and, you know, you've created a 3D world that people can see themselves being in. Here, let's add a little bit of well, this is good here. I'm gonna come over here now and test that on the other side. So there's my gray color. So now let's go back over here to this tree and let's see what this color does for me. I'm gonna scoot this, bear with me while I scoot this camera a little bit over so that I don't kick it. Put that right there because I want to scoot over just a little bit and I want to come in here and put some negative space. So little triangles like this. It's a very cray, very gray color, cray color. It's a very cray color, I said. <laughs> it's not, it's not that cray. Okay, we're gonna go like this and just do these little shapes maybe uh, coming up close to each other so that the space in between starts to create some some tree branches. So let's go a little further out right here and go like that and create a little bit of atmosphere back there, a little bit of atmosphere in here, a couple little dots of that shape. And then let's just really get this, get this color to come over here as well so that it looks like it's going back and behind that, you know. We just blend it into into this background right here and then we can real quickly get a get a background behind a tree so so I'm just thinking now oh, we've got kind of a green misty shadow let's just blend it over here you know whatever we use this was strategic not necessary I could have used these colors and continued them through and and that would would not have shown this this trunk as much so strategically i just put this color in here but now i have to resolve this conflict of background color the way i'll do that is just make a a gray or misty color by mixing the two of them together like maybe we've got a little bit of a a humidity cloud back there you know let's add some white to it we're just blending that color into this color into that little embankment as it goes back in here, then we kind of create some, some mystery in the picture so that we've got like a corner turning. You know, we've got something turning a corner in the distance and we get to wonder what might be back there. All right, now I'm just gonna blend these colors together. Let's put a little bit of a Put a little bit of a shadow up in here so that I don't lose my lose my uh, trees. I really like this little grove of trees back in here, so I'm going to put my shadow 
black and green back in there where I kind of lost it coming down like this. Might be able to just put a few dabs of that shadow in here too. Blue or grayer colors always seem to have a way of going back. You know, it'd be a fun challenge in a painting to try to make foreground with the gray blues and background with with the more warm tones like orange, yellow, red. That'd be a real challenge. Blue has a way of, of just sinking into the background. So by making a gray or bluer, it's greener too, but you know, it's it's just the way those cool gray colors just kind of disappear. Now if I grab a little bit of black and mix it with this brown, I can really pop these forward. The ones that I like, I like this one. Right there, let's put some, put some shadow on it coming out from under this tree. Like that, let's grab a little bit more black right here and put some shadow maybe, maybe under this branch. Like that, oh, now it's got a little knob on it. We can just kind of accent the branches that we like, like that. Put some shadow in there and there. Maybe add a few extra branches. You know, we can do both things. It's not, it's not just made of the technique doing the negative space, but I also paint a few of these over the top. The combination of the two gives me a little bit more diversity in in the uh, shapes that I'm getting and so then I can put maybe a little more of that shadow in here too. watch let's put dark black shadow on the far side of this trunk let's just go just a couple little dots is really all it needs look at that like that put black going up there black going up there and then let's put some maybe some little highlights what if the Sun is coming in and just barely catching that. Maybe we would have a color like this. Let's mix this color. Maroon, a little bit of yellow. I've already got tons of black and green in my brush, so when I mix this, look, it's gonna get way, way grayed out. I'll put some white in it. I'm just trying to get a light brown. That's all I want, it's just a light brown. Whatever kind of, whatever kind of hue. Let's just get a light brown. And go like this and put little highlights. If I put them diagonally, it, it puts the direction of the sun in there. So let's go like this and go down like that. Go like this, down that way. Diagonal line there. Whoops, that one was too fat. Anyway, you see, you see the effect. So now I just need my dark brown color again to repair that one that was a little bit dark here. Let's make some diagonal lines. There, and those diagonal lines, they just kind of put just that subtle effect of the, of the light coming through the canopy, striking that tree trunk. I feel like I want a little bit brighter highlight in there. Let's get a little bit brighter with it. White. Yellow, let's use red in there. Yellow. There, just a little bit brighter on that. Little highlight. Couple right in there. All right, so. I got to do something with this down here. Let's just make the ground going back. That's a pretty groundy looking color. Let's go like this. Go right up to that tree trunk. Bring this out like this. As long as I keep those brush strokes, you know, half of the half of the effect of ground is I'm just going to do a quick little Do a quick little uh, cut here so that you can so that I can talk for a minute. Uh, half of the half of the effect of ground is when we have the texture of the brush going really side to side like this. You know, just so the color the color is one influence, but but the texture I create with the brush of very horizontal lines. So I just take whatever colors on there, do that, blend it into the color above it. And then we've got 
we've got ground right away because of that. And so let's see if we've got, we've been painting for a while. And so I'm going to take a quick look at the live chat, see if there's anything you guys want to ask along the way here, any important things I'm missing, like the video crashed, the audio's off, <laughs> the things that can happen. How do you put grasses and plants in the closest foreground? Hey, let's do that next. That'll be fun. Let's do that along with some rocks. Let's do rocks and grass in the foreground. I hear his kids in the background. Yes, yes, we're sharing a house here just like the rest of you. Sharing the space. We got background noise. I'm also by a, a street with lots of traffic. You'll hear cars go by. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. It's going to make some real interesting how-to videos in the future. <laughs> Hey, you're welcome, Farah Pazir. Thank you. Thank you very much for the encouragement. Yes, grass is all right. All has been well. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's move over to... Move over to... My cameras. Let's get this going. Let's cut to... Cut to the zoomed-in scene again. And so... Let's put some grass. I think that is a swell idea. And so this is not going to give me a very bright green. But I can make it. So let's put blue. Let's put blue in here. Now, just like I was saying, just like I was saying, texture of your brush strokes. This is a huge deal with making grass. So I'm going to go down here and... We're going to put a shadow color on first. You can do highlight first, just like I did with the tree. Same kind of process. I'm going to create light and shadow, and then strategically move the gradients to create the depth of my shapes in the grass. So I want it to be greener as it comes forward, and maybe a little bit grayer, but this is all pretty, pretty foreground. Uh, so I'm going to put a, a bluish bluish base on it a little bit of little bit of black maybe black and blue we don't need super we don't need super green grass grass has a lot of yellow in it typically typically compared to compared to what you uh, would see on trees I feel like the grass in a landscape we normally see a little bit more yellow greens across the grass than than we do across the trees Okay, so I'm going to choose to make the grass a lot more of a yellow green. So I'm going to take this yellow and I'm just going to start putting shapes like this right across the picture. So this is where it really just comes down to brush technique, the texture that my brush leaves. Big brush like this is real handy. And so if I just make rows of this yellow over the top of this very heavy paint, then it's going to turn not yellow, but green. So this is using that super sensitive mixing tendency of the yellow to my advantage. You know, the yellow is, is so unstable. It's just the slightest touch. It mixes, it starts turning green. But that's good when I'm doing a technique like this. I want it to turn green. I just got to set myself up with the right base in order to get that effect. Let's go like that. And I can try going the other way too. Here, let's try going this way, upward strokes. And then I'm going to go down because see how my brush obscures that start, start line. So if I go here, I've got all those blunt edges on the bottom side of my strokes. And then if I go down here, a row under it, the next row makes those shadows on the underside. So it's probably helpful if I strategically work either from the bottom to the top or from the top to the bottom. I started bottom to the top. I feel like you can go either way with this. And then just knowing where to stop mixing, when to stop mixing, you know, because you will start to lose your texture, the colors, uh, they mix more and more, then they're not separate, then you don't have your, your difference between the light and the shadow. 
And when that happens, you know, you just do it again. I'm going to come back in here. Now, the way I get some good perspective on this grass is tightening these shapes closer and closer together using more and more of the yellow. You'll see less shadow in the background, less shadow back here because we've got, uh, we've got a different angle. We're looking across the tops down here. We're looking down into the grass. So for that reason, we would expect to see a lot less shadow back in here like this. And so I'm, when I speed up, see my stroke starting to go sideways. And you can see that that has an influence, maybe not necessarily a bad influence on the picture, but just a reminder that your, your the uh, direction of your brush strokes on a painting creates tiny texture that makes a big visual difference. So I'm just really putting these stripes close together now, the rows of grass and little hills and valleys emerge. I didn't try to make that in there. It's just where I ended up having a greater separation between those, between the, uh, my shadow and light color just ended up splitting apart down in here, created some, some little valleys. Let's go like this. Just little tiny, little tiny. I'm not going down anymore like this. Just little touches with the brush across here. And if we want, we can put a we can put a real bright spot in there. It might be fun in the distance to have that here. Let's see. Let me show you what this looks like when we zoom out a little bit. Like this. Let's go over here. So I'm feeling like I'm feeling like it'll be fun to see some bright light right in here you know to, i don't know just for effect it just seems like it would so i'm going to put just a touch of my phthalo green give myself a little bit greener base but it's just a touch it really is just a touch so i'm going to put that down here for a base and then i'm going to take lots of yellow and go like this and then i'm going to take some white and put that on there as well and then make these tiny little shapes going back and forth and be careful not to over mix because then I'll lose my bright green highlight. Just remember when you make highlights like this, use plenty of yellow. You know, if you make a big old highlight on a plant that ends up, ends up going bluer. So you can see this doesn't have as much yellow in it. It's going to look better if it's nice and bright yellow compared compared to this because grass blades are very translucent. Translucent things shift their hue toward yellow as they get brighter, as they're brightened by sunlight shining through them or any light, bright light shining through them. You'll see the hue shifting toward yellow. So if I want a real bright highlight on something, just remember something like this needs to shift toward yellow a little bit, but it's also going further into the background so maybe I can get away with less, less yellow back there because the background would be grayer, bluer. Let's put little patches of grass going over some rocks. If I just grab this bright color, I can just kind of put little dots of, of grass maybe going over some of these, some of these areas. All right, then we can put a bank on it. Let's put, let's put, I'm gonna start with, hmm, I'm, I'm thinking this through. I'm gonna try that same color with this, with this maroon. So I'm gonna go down here where that maroon is and put some dirt going like this. I gotta really mix it with that gray color and we'll put a little bit of an embankment, but sometimes, when it's so yellow, I have too bright of a color. So a little bit of black might be good in there as well. So maybe here, if I want a little bit of mud on the bank, I can create a little edge on the shore with some black. So let's put black in there right under all of this grass that I just painted. And down here, okay, something I see a lot of, you know, 
uh, perspective can get real scrambled up. I want to make sure these are very level, but when I get down in here, watch, I'm going to start sloping these lines a little bit more like this. So let's go like this. Slope it a little bit more because we're looking more down at this. And here, let's put some, let's put some details in there like this. But just remember that you can slope, you can slope lines a lot more in the foreground than in the background because of the downward angle that we're that we're seeing things with. So I've got my dark color in there. I kind of adjusted the slope and lost lost the effect of my grass. So I'll probably want to want to go back in there and adjust it again. But first, I'm just going to do more of it. Let's put black under here. Make some shadows underneath the plants like that. And then let's put some yellow right in there, going down into that black. All right, there we go. I'm just trying to get back some of the, what did I have? I really didn't use any green, did I? Oh, well, we did now. Let's put some brighter colors up on top of here. And put some brighter colors up here. This is just, you know, where I lost bright colors doing that, doing the bank. I'm just put, putting them back in. And now I'm just going to scribble the edges down into that shadow, creating some details. Got a real good question about technique when I was doing stuff like this in previous video. This is uh, being mindful of my distance from the canvas. So in order to get all the little grass blades and little details in here, I'm, I'm very sensitive about how close I am to that, to that canvas. You know, I, I have uh, spent enough time doing it that I, I just have a lot of sensitivity to how far I am so I can manage that light touch better than I used to be able to just because of time spent doing it and just watch out for it. Because you, you uh, put more pressure, you get a fatter shape. You put less pressure, you get a real tiny shape. So I can get tiny shapes by just barely, barely coming across there and just barely touching that canvas. We get the smaller shapes. And so now we've got a little bit of texture in there. So let's do black and maroon. So let's put the maroon under the black. Let's go up into the shadow like this. And now we've got our mud bank coming out from under that grass. We've got the dark color up in here too, black and maroon right here. I'm gonna put that there. I can always bring the water up to, up to that shore as well. Okay, now I'm ready to put some white in here. Let's put some put some ground in place just by putting a few highlights. Just white on top of my most colorful areas. I'm just putting little dabs of it in here as I just barely go up into the shadow. I want to just preserve some of the shadow. You know, that's why I'm being careful in there because I don't want to just completely lose it when I'm mixing my colors. Let's put a little bit of white in here now. Let's go like this. Little bit more of a level line as it goes over here. Look, that white kind of looks like the water washing up to it even, doesn't it? Okay, now I've just got that little shadow in there. You know, I, I like to have that. It's just a nice effect, seeing a little bit of shadow under the grass as it comes out comes out over the water and I feel like in here you know we need like some kind of a cool some kind of a cool rock formation in there huh that'd be good let's do that let's do that last let's put some kind of a nice nice rock formation right up in here yeah there we go we'll do it right there I think maybe right 
here. I'm going to put some kind of a rock formation and we're going to need a color to that. And so why don't I make it a little bit, a little bit grayer. This is all very red rocky, isn't it? I don't know. Let's just see what color comes out. These are my go-to colors. I create a brown. Put some shadows in it with black. I put some highlights in it with yellow on the red areas, not on the black areas. And it's just how much I let these mix with each other that determines whether it's a grayer rock, browner rock, redder rock. It's the same colors uh, for and any color in between. Same technique, same combo. So I'm gonna put some boulders kind of towering up this way. And now I've got some shadows in between some colorful blocks because when I came in with the yellow, I was careful not to, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here so you can see this better again. I was careful not to put the yellow on the black areas but on my already established red areas. And so by doing that, it creates these three-dimensional shapes. So I have my I have my shadow. Now I'll do a little bit more so you see that process again close up. So let's go, um, let's go this maroon color again. Let's put more rock here, maybe a higher one here. Let's put black shadows somewhere in here, just shadows, but not everywhere. I'm just making sure that there are areas that have more black, areas that have less black. So it looks like I need a little bit more black if I don't want this to be like a really maroon colored rock. So let's put black in there. Let's put black in here. Okay, now yellow. Yellow turns real green when it hits black. So this rock is about to look not very red. Yellow right there, there. Here's my reddest areas. Reddest areas are gonna be a great spot for my, my highlights that are coming out of the crevices of the rock. This is gonna have deeper, deeper crevices in it and some complex shape. Just because of the system of, of putting these colors together and keeping the yellow off of the black. And I like to think of it as keeping the highlight off of the shadow. Because this could be any set of three colors where I have the, where I have the uh, mid-tone and then I add my shadow to the mid-tone. The mid-tone in this one would have, would have been this maroon, the rust color. I would add the black to that maroon. And then on the other side, I add the yellow as the highlight to it. And I try not to let the yellow and black mix. Uh, except to a certain point for how gray I want it to become. So however gray I want this to become, to that extent, I do let them mix. Now I'm gonna take white, and I'm gonna take a little bit of white. You can see I've got a little bit on the corner of the brush, and up here where I've got my bright colors, that's where I put the white, and I can break it apart further. I don't have to do big blobs. I can do little shapes within my already bright areas. So we're putting white here. I have no idea what kind of shapes are going to come out of this rock. But I know that if I keep these separate, it's like my friend said when we were at a dance party. I'm embarrassed to say that a little bit. He said, I don't know how to dance, but I know that if I lay on my side and run, then I'll spin in a circle. That's what he did. And we got that on video. <laughs> and so I don't know what kind of rock is going to come out of this, but I know that if I put the highlight on the already colored areas, then it's going to have some kind of a three-dimensional form. Just by keeping the shadow and the highlight color separate. But now I do start to see something. You know, at a certain point, it's like, okay, okay. This is creating something cool, and then I start to run with it. As for the dancing, it didn't create anything great. Okay, let's go like this. Put some brighter 
you know, this kind of slopes the bottom out. I was feeling like, oh, it kind of looks like it's sloping out right there. And now the last thing I'll do is adjust the depth. So I don't have this right in the foreground, so I'm not going to leave these black. So I better come in here and maybe I'll even do this with a little bit of blue. Just grab a little bit of blue and let these shadows get a little bit lighter. So I'll just brush over them a few times. The brush already has some light colors in it. Nothing too extreme. I just want to hit the shadows a little bit so that this whole rock looks distant. The magic of distance happens in the shadows. So let's go like this, put blue in there, put blue there, blue there. We're just getting the pure black out of this. I'm gonna get a little bit of white and maybe put, whoa, that's not a little, that's a lot. Here, let's grab that off. Put a little bit of a lighter edge right there. And all I'm doing right here, if this was in the foreground, I wouldn't touch it. But since I want this to look further away, I'm just lightening those shadows and removing some of the color by adding the blue. Or I could say just adding blue atmosphere color. That's probably the more accurate way to describe what's what's being done there visually. Okay, so now we've lightened up any of the major dark shadows that are going to pop it forward and we have better distance. So now if I zoom out, you can see my you can see my steep steep boulder protruding out of the water. Zoom out like this and I've got some believable distance on there because of that. So let's go over here. And now we just got to think about what are we going to do with that? How does that fit in this picture? I'm going to put a reflection of it on the water. And so that's very simple. We've got like brown on brown. We got, we got a shallow stream bed with brown getting lit up by the sun. We've got a dark brown rock. We only have to do a lot of color thinking and adjusting if we actually have different colors. But when it's the same like this, there's not enough watercolor to influence this, all I've got to do is just make some uh, some color in between the two things. So I'm going to use black and brown. And I think since this is facing upward, this is actually a sunlit stream bed. So the reflection needs to be lighter than the rock. So I'm going to put white in here, lighten this up. And I'm going to bring this right across here, real horizontal strokes. So in this case, there would be times when you really wouldn't even be able to distinguish a reflection of something. That, that could happen, you know, because we might have uh, the colors being too close just like this. It's hard to even distinguish this reflection in here. But, you know, I can strategically offset the colors just enough so that you can see it. But you don't always see the reflection of something if the colors don't show it. Let's put those coming across like that. There we go. Okay, so then in here, we might have, okay, like I've got the reflection of that rock. It's a little bit darker than all this sunlit stream. I'm going to put more bright sunlit stream coming through the middle of that now. I chose this bright, or <clears throat> excuse me, chose this bright orange color for that stream bed. So I'll put red and yellow right here, put a little bit of white in it, and right in here. And this is just this is just strategic in order to in order to get this to show up, you know. Because I like the effect of some reflection in the picture. All I'm gonna do is just take that bright color I mixed that's meant to be similar to these colors, and I'm just gonna go like this little tiny little tiny stripes of that going across here. I'm going to get a little bit more color in it. We've got kind of an orange and we're just going to go 
like this right across here and that is the bright sunlit water showing out from under you know wherever there's a just like in the foreground the more saturated colors are the are the face of the wave rolling toward me and so if i just put a few of those in there then then it creates this this kind of darker reflection of this this upward facing rock these are just the little faces of waves that would be back in here I think just a few is good just a few little touches and I try to keep them real horizontal you know if I if I get little tiny shapes in there that are going the wrong direction it'll make a difference you know so I I want to be real sensitive to the to the direction of those brush strokes all right then down here you know we've got all this dark tree we don't have the brighter bluer sky so down here I might have my my darker reflection and here let's put more reflection of these of these trees going down let's take that and blend it into the sorry so here's my trees and zoom out right here and we're going to put some reflection of those trees on the water now I'm going to put green in there and I'll first kind of repair my repair my trees up here so blue and white will probably get me that color again we've got all that red in my brush so if I just put blue in it I just put blue in it it's going to get more gray get that color let's do some black and that looks like it matches pretty all right. Let's go like this. Looks like we need just a little more white, just a little bit. Because this is going to dry darker. Okay, so let's put that color in there. Let's go down here and put some. Let's put some land in there. And I'm thinking that we're just going to take this maroon again and just go like that across and put some white right here, like this. Oops, wrong painting. I went to unload my brush. You didn't see it off camera, but I put it on the put it on the painting that's this one's hung over the top of. One reason to not do that. It's that underwater scene I did in the previous videos. Okay, so we've got the ground coming out from under the trees, and I feel like I need a little bit of a shadow in there too. So we're just setting up the, the scene a little bit so that the reflection really, really delivers here. And I'm gonna put blue in there so that that's not quite so brown. Let's move it up in here. Let's put those trees a little bit, a little bit closer to the edge. Okay, now we're ready. Now we're ready to put some reflection down there. So let's take this, take this stream and let's cut it off right, like right here. Let's put a little angle on this so it kind of comes, comes down this way. Out from behind this rock in there, behind the trees, like that. distant grayish color for the ground all right then we're gonna have reflection so let's do green on orange is gonna produce a very gray very gray result so let's just see what happens when we go light gray for this reflection just gray right here And again, I want it to be a little lighter than my than my trees because these have shadows, this has sunlight. So I'm gonna bring this reflection color right up to this reflection, and I'm gonna create my little my little ripples just with some lines, just horizontal lines. You just gotta make sure that they're real, real horizontal. And I'm just gonna start building this shape upside down. 
that rock kind of goes this way, comes down here. Okay, then our trees are here. Just building my same scene upside down right here. And then I need a gradient. We're gonna see a lot less of this reflection as it comes down. So let's do red and yellow in here now, like this, red and yellow to get that orange color of my sunlit stream. And then we're gonna start just putting this right up in here. It's gonna gradually mix. We want a gradient. And so this is gonna mix with the orange and I'm gonna get my, my in-between color where this reflection gets more, more true to the source as it goes further and further back on the water. Let's take that reflection color all the way up behind this rock right here, like that. Doing reflection colors, you know, it's just color math. It's just like, okay, well, computers have done all the work for us now. You know, they already, they've already been programmed. I guess people figured out how to program the computers to do that, but, you know, you just mimic. This is what I found so helpful about learning how, how colors are modeled on computer screens. Okay, I get more and more orange as I come down, if that's the color of my water. Let's just blend this in here and put a few little bright spots where we've got the sun, wherever I have the most red, you know, those are, those are good little spots to put highlights. Put some highlights in there. Let's grab some white and put it on these yellower spots too. Wherever I have these, I can just put little nicks of bright gold colored, gold colored ground, you know, in there and here. I can make it going all the way through. Look, I put it right there, so I'll also put it right through here. Goes through the whole thing. You can put longer waves going right through both of these colors because it's both reflection. Let's go like this. Put some more yellow and white right in here. And we'll go like this. Put a bright little ripple going right across there. Let's take this, take this brighter color. Put little highlights in there. All right. You know, and then we might ever so slightly, this reflection gets less and less and less as it goes down here. So we might want to ever so slightly darken uh, or lighten, lighten, I'm sorry, lighten this color when I get to the bottom. So this whole tree image upside down might go down to here and we might want to see the edge of that, you know. So, so let's say that we go little bit darker and mm, here let's just add white let's go like this we've got a little more reflection right in here i know i actually don't know if this is going to work i'm just trying to make it a little bit lighter for where we have the reflection of that forest coming down maybe it would go down like this far i don't know let's make some horizontal shapes and we'll break up the shapes. I feel like this this is really going to help right here. If we if we take those shapes and make sure we've got a bunch of horizontal horizontal waves in there. Like this. So now this is this is the blue. This is the blue sky reflecting on on this. I just added a tiny bit of blue. I want it to stay on the purple side. But down here where it hits the top of the trees, then we're going up that way. I can just use this color to make, make that line. It's always amazing to me how sometimes the best effects are the very subtle ones. You know, just a tiny little line. It's like, oh wow, there's that nice soft, that little gradient on the, on the water really, really is cool, you know. So then down here I want another another gradient 
like this. Another gradient right here going into the orange again. And you know, you, you never really need all these details in here. The colors will do it. So here, anywhere I put this more saturated color, we've got a bright sky reflecting on it now. You just decide what's brighter, the sky or the sun that rocks. It could be either way. And so, you know, sometimes it just doesn't matter. Just let the paint decide. All I know is I need to have underwater color on the faces of the waves. And I need to have my reflection color on the tops of the waves. Let's go like this. Put more of that orange in here. Put more of this yellow. Put my little sunlit spots popping through the reflection. There we go. Let's put this color coming in here. I've got some, I've got some merging of colors to do. I've got a <laughs> different color set over there. Hmm. There, just kind of merge them together. Then maybe I can just take this and make some brighter. We'll just adjust this. This is like the face of a wave. If I just if I just blast that with some yellow, brighten it up, it'll still have that effect. We've got the sunlight coming in here, hitting some rocks. Maybe make the sunlight come in here, hitting some. Same thing, use some yellow. I always think it's fun to get the effect with unlikely, with unlikely colors to prove, you know, just to demonstrate the effect how it happens with the pattern of colors rather than the than the exact set of colors. That's kind of a fun thing to do in paintings. Now let's put a little bit of white, like right here. Let's put a little white highlight. I'm really zigzagging that line. Like that. Then we'll put it again in here. Make it look like those little squigglies, you know? Caustics. Caustics, they call them. Well, I didn't get to doing it with any other colors, you know? I didn't get to actually adding other colors in there, but you know, I'm excited about I'm excited about where it's headed. <clears throat> I've got uh some transitioning to do, you know, I want these colors to to hit these colors and look the same. But I'm happy with the way it's looking. Here, let's see. Let's see what you guys are saying before we wrap it up for the day. I have to go. Pain is getting to be too much. Oh, man. It is painful to watch me sometimes, I know. I'm sorry. Yeah. I feel like I lost my, lost my webcam just a little bit there. Let's go like that. There we go, sorry. Okay. So, yes, take care, take care. Okay, if anybody has any last minute comments that you want to squeeze in, now is the time that we'll, that we'll do that. And it takes, you know, we're on like a 10 second delay, something like that. I can see it, see the feed on my computer screen. So just give it a minute to, to come up. I'll glance over there while I'm putting a couple little finishing touches on here and I'm going to be doing the same thing I've been doing all this time just putting putting little highlights in here and putting reflection in between so once once you get familiar with this system you can use any colors you know you just put the faces of the waves with the underwater color and then you put your 
put your reflection color in between that. So here I've got, you know, maybe a little bit of a little bit of black, a little black to make a grayer color. And maybe this is ramping up a little bit on these like that. Not that you can see what I'm doing because I forgot to switch the camera. Here, let's do this. <laughs> how many years are you painting? Mm, let's see, how many has it been? YouTube started in 05. It was about 08 I started posting videos. I think about since 2005 I've been painting real seriously, trying to hone the skills. Should we add some sky holes in the foreground tree? Oh, we can totally do that. Sky holes in the foreground tree. That's a great idea. Here, let's do it real quick. Just take a second. So here, let me let me remember how to switch my camera over. And so we're going to go right here and cut to the close-up view. Let's zoom out here a little bit. And we're going to see this tree right here. You're talking about this one, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, we can totally do this. Yeah. Hmm. There's other problems with that too, man. That could have done been done better. <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned that. Let's blend this out. I want to get this get this wrapped up before I move to a new spot. Here. Put this in here. You know, as long as you just kind of stretch out your brush strokes nice and nice and horizontal, you can kind of smooth over anything, you know? Okay, so yes, negative space. It's very fun to do. So let's go like this. I like that you use the term sky holes. I think that's really great. I love that description. And so we'll do that exact thing. We'll mix a little bit of our sky color with blue and white. And this little brush right here. And let's put a little bit more in here. Get a nice light blue. And then we can just put little tiny holes in here. Little sky holes. And I think the shadows are a really great place to put them. You know, because maybe the shadows is where you have branches that are... Let's get close. Let's get closer. All you see is little dots there. Whoa, whoa, we're going in here. Ah, there we go, sky holes. Something I love to do is work with negative space, and so I'm really excited that you remembered that, thought of this technique. So we could put little, little spots of negative space anywhere in this tree especially by these branches, you know, but we don't want to go way down here because look, there's no, let's put sky holes back here. Put some up and down lines, a little more vertical and we can make it more like little, little trunks of trees in between. Right there in the black areas. So all you need is the setup. You just need the context of, you just need the context of a tree next to a sky and then really stick with those those color relationships, you know, so when you put this on, it's like, oh yeah, that's, that's coming down from, from the sky and we've got it overlapping and that's the sky popping through there. But look, now I've overdone it. Look what I did. No, it's not too bad. It can be very quickly overdone because it's fun. Watch out for fun techniques. They get you. <laughs> All right. All right, so then we've got, let's see what else we got here on the live chat. Do you ever paint animals such as cats? Have I ever painted a cat? I painted a cheetah in my daughter's room at an old house. That's as far as I've gone. 
painting animals is tricky. I painted a panda bear for my wife a long time ago, had a lot of trouble with it, and kind of did small adjustments <laughs> over, over time as I was staring at it on our wall. Still a lot of things I would like to adjust. That's a constant learning, learning curve for me is learning people and animals. Hard subject. Do you notice any major differences in painting larger versus smaller paintings? Because I usually do smaller ones. Well, I just use a small brush for, for my small paintings. That is the same shape as my large brush. So I actually just transfer over the exact same techniques for small versus large. Really, I do. So if I need, if I need a different kind of brush, which I do sometimes, maybe use a sponge or ink, I really just try to scale up the tool and do the exact same effect on the canvas. So in that way, I don't notice the difference, but I notice the big difference with small paintings is the priority on smaller detail because your expectations is for people to look at it from close, they're right up on it. You know, a small painting people might be this close and that might feel normal if it's just a little thing on the wall. So then, the tedious process of being mindful of those details. I, I feel so much more liberated when I'm moving my body, doing a big mural from far away, you know, it's much more exhilarating for me. Yes, you did lions. Oh, you're right. <laughs> you're right, Susan, I did lions. They were, that was kind of an illustrative style. You know, I just brightened the colors, kind of orangey colors, did dark outlines on them like cartoon characters, but I tried to make lifelike form. Now that was some time ago, but that's it. That video is up there. You can see that. I don't know what to call I don't know what the name of that video is. You know, I've done so terrible with trying to do catchy titles. I just very plainly named the videos Painting Lions. <laughs> can you explain how the time of day affects where the shadows fall and placement of reflections in the water? Oh, good question. Good question. It doesn't. It doesn't affect the reflection on the water. So the, the shadows are affected. The shadows get cast by the direction of the sun. And so you can think your way through that. You've got, you know, I've got light on the left side of this rock, right? I'll have a shadow going this way. We don't change the reflection for that. That, that happens for a different reason. The reflection is always the light that is coming from the direction you're looking. That is reflection. So the reflection is not a result of where the sun is shining from. Because there's light everywhere. That sunlight is hitting the sky and bouncing at some point toward your eyes. So reflection is based on all the light that's here shining straight toward my eyes. That's what it is. And that direction doesn't change when the sun changes. While the shadows are a result of the direction of the sun and you know, where the light gets blocked from creates a different shaped shadow. And then that shadow bounces and we see, we could see the reflection of a shadow for that reason. So, so it doesn't. Good thing to separate. Keep them separate. And, and I always think it's fun when you can see, let's say you have a coffee table in your room and you can see a reflection of something on it. You can also see a shadow across the surface of it. You can see both things. And so it's, I think it's really awesome in paintings when you can represent those two things. Animals are easier for me than landscapes, for sure. Yeah, well, I, I totally relate to that. They both have their difficulties, you know. Uh, landscape maybe is, yeah, just, just different. All I ever did when I, was, when I was learning to draw, I just grew up drawing pictures, always drawing pictures. And uh, I, I found that landscapes were an overwhelming concept because now we're talking about textures and colors that that create what I what I'm looking at and then, you know I'm starting from scratch and I'm just thinking this feels impossible I don't know how I could ever paint all of the little leaves on a tree because coming from a drawing background I draw things close up I draw every part I can think of so you don't think about all of the tricks and illusions that can be created by just combining colors and, and textures with technique. So, I totally relate to that. But landscapes, landscapes, men, uh, uh, research, 
Research and advice pays off big with landscapes. Don't try to figure it out on your own. See what is being done. Add to that. I mean, yes, try to figure things out, but try to figure out stuff that doesn't already have a real clear <laughs> clear path that somebody else has done for you, you know. You don't have to reinvent a wheel on landscapes and it's all about tricky techniques to achieve illusions. Is it finished? No, it's not finished because look in here, it's not finished. I gotta do something, you know, we've got tomorrow and then I'll start a new painting on Thursday because I've got a day in between to prepare. And so, so uh, if you look, if you look in here, I'm just gonna switch, I'm gonna switch over to the other camera and you know i've got a lot of a lot of unfinished stuff in here look that green grass can't just do that i can't have that just around that trunk like that that looks stupid so let's go like this let's zoom out and we can kind of create like a little punch list on what this needs in order to be finished but this is one thing that i could just address right now we could just do this and be done with it. We've got our yellow right here, these greens. I need to come up here and put those in behind this tree like this. Needs to go back here, back here. Let's go back here. Okay, we need that. I've got a lot of glare, so I'm having trouble seeing. Let's go like this. You know, we can't be having that grass just making a outline on that tree. And then I need a shoreline. You know, this shoreline is hurting. It needs like some, it needs like some water splashing up. So where I've got this, I've got my yellow, my maroon is coming up here, splashing around. I've got to like put a, put a splashy shoreline here. Let's see if we can do some, let's see if we can do some stuff in here. Put a little bit of white in here where it's maybe a little bit more reflective along the edge. A few little ripples in there like this. A little bit of white in there. We're just doing some quick impressionistic stuff, you know. Let's just try to get, let's try to get the, we did all kinds of little tricks to have illusions in this picture. Let's try to create the illusion of finished. <laughs> There, so that when somebody at least looks at it from a distance, they'll say, oh, nice painting. But then when they get close up, it might be a different story, but that's okay. That's okay, because this one is just for the purpose of a study. There we go, we get a little bit of, little bit of texture in there. Here, let's add a little bit, a little bit more of this brown because it's a little bit intense in there. We don't need quite so much white. I went a little bit overboard with that. Then let's put the black, let's put the dark shadow of the grass so we can just put a little bit of, a little bit of black and yellow. Reflection of grass, how do we do that? Let's put black, yellow, and ground. Coming down like this, right under there. Like this. Yep, you can hear my five-year-old back there, can't you? Let's go here. Put some reflection down there. And let's get this. Okay, now I think we can start calling it finished. Now that we've got these, we've got these little edges finished in here, let's put some little grass blades coming down. Let's kind of scribble these shapes down. Like that. And those, it needs a lot over in here. You know, okay, it's not gonna be done. I tried, it at least looks more done now because you said that. So, <laughs> you know, something I've never been good at is finishing, finishing a, uh, a painting. I think before he closes out, we should do paintbrush tosses like his old vids. Your kids want lunch now. Is it lunch time? 
Oh man. Paintbrush tosses are like this, you know, you just you just grab the handle, spin it toward you. Oh try again. Grab the handle, spin it toward you. <laughs> this is why I don't do it. Okay, wait. I gotta get warmed up. It's smaller, it's harder with the smaller brush. Okay, I got it that time. That's one. Two. Okay, ready? Three. Okay, now we're going to the painting. Dip in the red. Boom. Pretend. Pretend dip in the red. Paint the picture. Okay, now other hand. <laughs> it's on the computer. It's easier with the big brush. All right. Here's my best brush tricks. Big brush is easier. You know, the weight is what I practiced with to get this spin just right. Okay, dip in the paint, come up, go to the picture, other hand, try this one. Oh, grab it upside down. <laughs> the small brushes are a little bit harder to handle. Such talent, I know, I know. You can tell that I had a lot of free time on jobs. Well, my brand new laptop has some character now. It's got some, got some paint on it. Other lessons are this good. I'm ordering the painting package. <laughs> They're older. They have excellent information. They have excellent information. If you want to understand the parts of things and how I break down the shadow, the light, it's worth getting. It's worth getting that too. Um, I just really tried to... I just really tried to make useful tools for creativity, you know, so, so uh, many people have done a great job with a walkthrough on a complete painting. And I went more the way, like, let's understand how waves works and break down the parts and really understand. I go into great length on a lot of different things. It's worth getting for that kind of lesson. <laughs> It'll look flawless. No, <laughs> it'll never. <laughs> All right, guys. I want to thank you for tuning in again. And we're going to end this stream. And I'll just remind you before I, before I end it that... Uh, um, yes, I've done a... I'll answer this one last thing. Yes, I've done a self-portrait. <laughs> I've done a self-portrait, and it is in the ownership of an, an ex-girlfriend. There's there's no getting stuff back like that. You know, it's <laughs> a lot of years went by. Okay. We're going to end the stream, and the next one will be tomorrow, same time. So tune in on this channel, same time tomorrow. And uh, I'll be here uh, wrapping up this painting, adding a few other things, maybe experiment with other colors on the underwater objects, some more details you can do with cascading, rippling water, whatever you want to add in there. I'll listen to your comments for things to add in so that I can get this to look uh, more finished and, and kind of final. It's going to end up being the best painting I did on a practice board that's just going to get painted over or thrown away. <laughs> Okay, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you.